Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your uh, introduction. My name is Yuki Watanabe at the National Institute of Polar Research, Japan. So today I'd like to talk about the potential of biologging or animal tracking tool uh, uh, as a tool for uh, foraging ecology. Foraging ecology is a fundamental area in ecology. There are generally three methods to study foraging ecology. The most basic method is observation with binoculars, pencil, and notebook. The second method is stomach content or scat analysis. The third method is chemical analysis, such as sta stable isotope ratio analysis. I propose the fourth method, which is uh, biologing with camera tags. So biologing method can complement these three uh, conventional methods. I am showing two examples, uh, penguin and seals. Back in 2010, we attached biologing devices, including video camera, to Adelie penguin in Antarctica. These animals were known to eat krill, but not known how they catch krill or how often they catch krill. So I'm showing a footage of a penguin catching krill filmed by that penguin. So this is very fast. So please watch uh, carefully. Please imagine that uh, you are a penguin. Finished. So uh, now uh, I'm playing uh, the same uh, film in a slow speed. So this shadow is a uh, creel. So we got uh, amazing footage, but the problem is that recording duration of our camera was only 90 minutes limited by batteries. So we linked the foraging event seen in the footage to behavioral signal of foraging event recorded by other biologing devices, acceleration in this case. So this graph show a dive of a penguin, signals on the bottom are potential foraging event detected as a acceleration signals, answer, on the bottom is real foraging event shown by video camera. As you can see, signals are not perfect, but pretty good. So once signals were validated, we were able to extend signal analysis to the whole acceleration data, which cover the entire foraging trip of penguin. In this way, we were able to monitor when, how, and what kind of prey penguin hunt in the water. This method allowed us to examine an ecosystem level question, which is the, lab, uh, which is the effect of sea ice on penguin population. We had multiple field seasons with con contrasting sea ice conditions. As you can see on the left, our field site is normally surrounded by extensive sea ice and the penguin travel by walking on the ice and find clerks for diving. However, as you can see on the light, we had an unusual field season in 2016 to 2017 when almost all sea ice was gone. Penguin traveled by swimming in this season. So this change is due to local weather condition rather than global warming, but this is a kind of natural experiment where we could examine the effect of global warming. So using biologging, we found very clear effect of sea ice. In the season without sea ice, the range of penguin foraging trip expanded because uh, swimming is faster than walking. Primary production in the sea increased because sunlight directly came to the water. Foraging efficiency of penguin increased as determined by the combination of video camera and accelerometers. Consequently, breeding success of penguin increased. So quite surprisingly, 
the lack of sea ice had very strong and positive effect of penguin population in our study area. So in the next few decades, penguin population are expected to increase as sea ice declines due to global warming, at least in our study area. However, uh, we acknowledge that Antarctica is a huge conti continent and the effect of sea ice may be different among regions due to local conditions. Next example is Baikal seals in Lake Baikal, Russia. Baikal seals are world's only freshwater seal species. Lake Baikal is a UNESCO's world heritage with full of endemic species, perhaps comparable to Galapagos. So this drawing is a general view of Lake Baikal food wave. As you can see, Baikal seals uh, on the top are considered as fish eaters. In 2018, we conducted bi biologing studies and found that this food wave is not correct. Baikal seals eat not only fish, but also one trophic level below, uh, which is uh, Macroheptopus, which is a tiny endemic pelagic amphipod. So I, I'm now showing the video footage filmed by a seal. So this is again, very fast. So watch it carefully. Please imagine that you are a seal. So seals are eating something very small. You can see seals are eating not fish, but this one, tiny amphipod. As we did for penguins, we linked the foraging event seen in the footage to simultaneously recorded behavior data. This graph show a dive and the seal captured 154 amphipods during the bottom phase, according to the video footage. Body acceleration shown on the bottom worked as a behavioral signal of amphipod capture event. Overall, my uh, analysis found that Baikal seals caught more than 50 amphipods per dive and more than 4,000 amphipods per day. Because amphipods are so tiny, Baikal seals have to catch many of them one by one. Our big surprise was that we also found that Baikal seals have unique teeth, which are apparently specialized for cap catching amphipods. As you can see, their teeth are like a filter with many small gaps. My interpretation is that to catch amphipod, Baikal seals open the mouth in the water thousands of times per day, and each time water comes in. So Baikal seals can expel water through the gaps of their teeth while retaining amphipod. So in this way, Baikal seals can eat thousands of, thousands of amphipods without drinking excessive amount of water. Of course, there are many other studies showing the link between foraging behavior and foraging morphology, but our finding is unique because we got biologing data first. And based on the video observation, I checked the teeth morphology of Baikal seals initially on Google and was very, very surprised. So here is summary. I think there is a large potential of biologging as a tool for foraging ecology. Biologging gives time-stamped information of foraging event along with detailed animal behavior. So this method can complement conventional methods such as stomach contents analysis and stable isotope ratio analysis. As I showed for Adelie penguin and Baikal seals, this method helped us to examine 
ecosystem level question. However, there are still much room for technological improvement, especially for camera tags. The big, biggest issue I have is that the method works fine for end endothermic species, such as mammals and birds, but not ectothermic fish species, such as fish. Because foraging events of fish are so infrequent, it's difficult to film. So, so smart camera, such as acceleration trigger camera, will be a big help for applying this method to a wide range of animals. So thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thanks. Thank you, Yuki. Um, we um, ooh, sorry. Um, we have uh, a question from our registration. We thought you might be able to answer. Um, and it, it was uh, A. Robson asking, what do ecologists and conservationists need from technology in the future and what are their challenges? And you just talked about the acceleration triggered cam um, uh, being a critical innovation that you could see, but are there any others? Yeah, I think there are many other uh, improvements such as, uh, first of all, camera is too big for many species currently. Mm. So the camera must be, uh, made more, much smaller and also recording duration is also very short and also uh, fil filming under the darkness can be problem uh, so there are many many uh, uh, room for improvement and you you seem to be combining a lot of pieces of data what was one piece of data that you didn't think you'd need but then later on became really useful to answer a research question uh, Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm always interested in the acceleration data, which have many, many different type of information. So it's, it's uh, sometimes I, I found very useful. Uh, I found acceleration uh, very useful later in, in my in my analysis. Um, Zedulu. Uh, I'm not sorry if I said your name incorrectly. Do you want to jump in and ask this question? Hi, Yuki. I was just wondering, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, interesting talk, Yuki. And I was just curious to know about the, you, you mentioned somewhere, the acceleration based, uh, you know, triggered cameras. Like, uh, can you, can you put more lights into that uh, technology being deployed or you're with planning or anything like that? Yes, as far as I, I know, uh, my colleague uh, Yasuhiko Naito and uh, Dan Costa uh, made such camera and put put them on uh, elephant seals. So, so the basically uh, because the, uh, recording duration of video is normally very limited by battery, so they must uh, save battery. So, uh, such camera acceleration type. Uh, Acceleration trigger camera have accelerometer on board and they can trigger by acceleration signal, which is a foraging signal, and then uh, film uh, effi effi efficiently uh, the period of, of foraging. So uh, there, there are uh, such camera already, and uh, but uh, only very small people are using, and uh, I'm very interested in using such technology. Thank you, thank you. Um... Mark, do you want to jump in? Sure, thank you. Can you hear me okay? We can. Um, that was really fascinating. Thank you for giving that talk. Um, I'm curious, you know, besides the, the size difference of the camera for maybe looking at a lot of passerines and other perching birds um, that keep their heads on a semi-perpendicular axis compared to their body, how would you go about doing this sort of thing for species like that? You mean, uh, what, what is the question? Oh, sorry. So um, like a lot of birds that when yes. they're foraging, their head is uh, on a perpendicular angle to the rest of their, their spine and their body when they're foraging. And so how would you um, attach and position the camera to get that sort of footage? Uh, let's assume that the camera. Yeah, yeah, I, 
Yeah, there are many uh, prob problems specific specific to species. I, I can I can I can understand. Unfortunately for penguins, there are uh, so, such no uh, problem, no such problem. But uh, but uh, I attach camera to many species of sharks. But sharks have a mass on 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 the on the uh, belly side, so it's very difficult to film. So I I have no clear answer for for that. But there are many many such problems. Thank you. Harold, do you want to jump in? Uh, hi, Yuki. Thanks for the talk. Very, uh, very interesting. And I love all the video. Uh, I'm, I wonder, um, since the action happened so very quickly, uh, how do you balance the um, frame rate of your video with the um, um, and, and the resolution against the uh, uh, battery, battery consumption and, and so on? Thank you. Uh, thank you. So the camera I use is not very high resolution, and uh, I cannot remember the number, but it's a research purpose, so I don't need very high uh, resolution. And uh, sampling frequencies, I, I, as far as I remember, uh, it's about 30 uh, frames per, per second. So uh, to me, it's, it's good, good, good enough. I don't need very high 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 resolutions. Thank you very much. Um, final question from Tobias, um, who doesn't have a mic, so I uh, will be him, um, says this is very interesting. Did you generalize the recording, um, the recorded patterns backed by video evidence to apply them on ACC only measurements over a longer period, like model training? Uh, what I did is more basic. I didn't use model training. I I I I, I uh, made some signal. I made uh, some uh, signal and check by eye one by one. Okay, to Tobias, did that answer your question? You can, can pick up with you in the chat if not. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Yuki. Um, we'll bring you back in a few minutes. Uh, okay, he says yes. Perfect. Yuki, do you want to um, jump in? Thank you.